systems, you have some, you have a golden principle called, data independence actually solves much of the problems of relational databases, but it doesn't solve any of the problems which we discussed here because we don't have data independence in semi-structured data. In fact, all the query languages or path expressions which he described actually knows how to traverse the tree. You actually say, okay, this is how you traverse the unit directory. So the query you write actually knows how to traverse the tree. On the other hand, in a relational database, you never say how to query something. You just say, okay, give me this, you, your queries are specified at this logical level. You don't know anything about this query. So what happens is that all those uh, query languages, path expressions, or style sheet transformations, XSLD, and things like that are very poorly developed, at least theoretically. And the only, only part which is slightly or satisfactorily developed is uh, schema definition languages. This is actually not part of XML. XML actually got this idea, or semi-structured paradigm, got this uh, idea from some old class of languages called XML, because way before the origin of XML, it is used to mark up dictionaries as we know today. Your Oxford dictionary. So SGML was used to, was used in all ways to mark up the dictionaries and things like that, so they have all this. And a, a subset of SGML, is, a restricted subset of SGML is for XML. Actually what you know today as HTML is actually for a, a language which is written in SGML, which says that, okay, these tags are these, these meanings. Okay, so what I'm going to do about this, to describe about the schema part, what is actually schemas and what are actually, in what, Jam already discussed about that, but uh, I'll just elucidate on what is actually the schema and so on. So, XML is majorly used, as Jam said, XML is the majorly used standard for data exchange in the web. And uh, how does this thing work? Suppose you have this books uh, in India, they use that uh, uh, standard or the data exchange which Jan described. They have this uh, recipe ingredients, uh, inger and so on. And uh, so one of the one of the major cooks decide that, okay, this is the standard which we are going to use, and he writes a DB. And everybody follows writing the recipes in this XML document. And they say that, okay, this is how we are going, this is how, according to this DGD, we are going to interpret this document. And the ingredients stand for ingredient, recipe stands for recipe. And uh, suppose you have one another country where you have another DVD here. They use a different DVD. Because, uh, uh, I mean, just like Victor Vianu said, web is actually a, like an ecosystem where evolution happens. On the other hand, the database systems are actually very controlled. Web actually evolves, right? The way web was last year is not the way it is today. So these two guys are there. Now suppose one day, yeah, so this is the major idea of DGD. Now suppose one day these two want, guys want to exchange their data. They'll have to re re rewrite their DGD. They'll have to, according to um, they'll have to check whether these two things are consistent and so on. So that's how we enter into the picture of Automata. Why can't you have a Python program or let's say a Java program here and another Java program here to check whether these two documents are consistent? I mean, what I'm asking is, why can't you have a Java program instead of this DG, which checks that, okay, whether your document actually corresponds to that standard, and another Java program here. Why, why can't you have that? Or think of in this sense. Suppose you have this Java program P1, and you have a Java program P2, where P1 checks the consistency, I mean, P1 checks the membership and all those things in this India. I mean, in India, and P2 checks the membership. Now, if you want to check whether these two DGDs actually conflict or one contains the other or something like that, will it be doable? So, what I'm saying is, on all theorem in computer science, in fact, the first theorem in computer science says that you can't check whether two Java programs are equivalent. Any non-trivial property about a Java program is not doable by a, by a computer. So, given two, these two DGDs are same. That's why we need something less powerful than a Java program or a Python program for any for that matter. We need something less powerful than a tool machine. That's how we enter to from the water meta. So water meta in general means just, just a machine, just a model of computation. But generally it is less powerful than 
Turing machine is the is the formal model of computation, and uh, there are other less powerful things than a Turing machine. Or your ATM machine is actually called uh, automata or word uh, automata ATM machine, which has only finitely many states. And if you add a stack to it, you will get a Poisson automata. So, what we are actually planning here is to replace this. Uh, so we need a uh, we need a formal model of computation which is less which is less expressive than a Turing machine. But some questions about should this thing should be decided. Things like even a DTD D1 and a DTD D2, you should be able to check whether one is a subset of the other. You should be able to check whether both are equivalent. And given a tree T and a DTD D, it should be checkable whether, it should be not only checkable, it should be checkable efficiently that whether D satisfies T. Means uh, T is actually an algebra. So we have a tree alphabet. And uh, the tree alphabet generally has some it's not just one alphabet because we saw that some alphabet, uh, in, in when we compose trees, many of them can't have uh, more than one children. Some should have exactly two children and so on. That we specify using the arity. Actually, we can formulate right, uh, let the sigma is the tree alphabet. We can say arity is a function from n to 2 to the sigma. That means that corresponding division of okay, this should be a the domain should be finite. So it says that, okay, for corresponding to this arity, these, these letters are there. For example, okay, we'll see that. And uh, bounded arity, that bounded arity means in a, if I write, a, if I specify a tree alphabet, and all the uh, letters have only, all the arity of all the letters are bounded by some constant, then I say that it's a trying trees. And if it is unbounded, I say it's a, they, they are untrained trees. The example documents are untrained trees. In fact, we can specify only whether there exists one child of a non or there exists more than one child. That those only those things are specifiable in